this lecture we'll continue on with our field service scenario. We have created our sales order to sell the laser and we've got our installation and it created a service order in the background. So what do you think the next step would be? Well, uh, assuming that we create these lasers ourselves at our company, it would be we would go ahead and then uh, build the laser in whatever fashion we do, maybe on a production order, um, and then it would come into inventory. So once it's in inventory, we would uh, run an ATP check against that line item again. And so let's do that. I'm going to select it, check item availability, and now we've got one in stock. So I can say yes, uh, I can take it. And now if I go look at the schedule lines for that item, I can see that it's confirmed for the 15th. So that's good. So I can go ahead and save it. And so now I've got the product ready to ship. And I've got my installation. And if you'll recall, one of the things we wanted to have happen was that we wanted the um, both these items to be on the same invoice which is pretty a pretty common requirement you don't want two separate invoices customers for this kind of thing would usually prefer one invoice and also a reminder that we are the type of billing we're doing for this installation is um, a fixed price so it's not based on the time and materials that are used as part of the installation it's just a flat price we're charging the customer uh, $599 for. We're saying we'll do this installation regardless of what it costs us. Hopefully we're making some money on something in here. So the next step would be to deliver it. So let's go try that. So we're going to go up here to delivery. And I'm sure we'll have to change the dates because it's not ready until the 15th. The, uh, the laser that is. And we don't want... Yeah we want it to be delivered so we'll say run this out to the 15th and see what we get hopefully we'll get both items yeah we did okay so there's our laser there's our install uh, laser is a tan standard item the the install is a tax which again is a service with delivery so that is good. Let's go over to the picking screen. Um, warehouse management, warehouse transfer order required. Hopefully we shouldn't have to pick the installation. So let's go ahead and save the delivery. And then we'll come back into change mode. Yes, it's thinking about it. Saving things in the background. Let's try it again. Yellow to N. Come on. It's must be thinking about a lot of stuff. It's got me locking it up. There we go. Okay. So now we'll, it's been, uh, delivery's been saved, it's not picked, and there's a warehouse transfer order required. Let's go up to subsequent fu functions, create transfer order, which is again just to move things around in the warehouse to get it ready to pick or to do the picking. So uh, it knows that it's just only doing it for the, the first item, which is good. We'll save that. Then we should see that first item picked, and the second item, the install, should not be relevant for picking. So then we should be able to post goods issue if everything goes as planned. 
OK, and so our transfer order was created. So we should be able to go back into the delivery and see what's going on there. So we got one picked, and we got a zero grayed out here for the second item installation because it's not relevant. Fully picked as a status. So I'll try to post goods issue. I know there's going to be some messages, and we will take care of those as they come up. And this is going to introduce us to another feature, one that we saw before, but we'll, we'll go into a little more depth here. Item 10 requires exactly one serial number for the asset. So that means that this first material, the laser, is serialized, has a serial requirement at the time of delivery. So let's go look at that material. Can we? Can we? Nope. We'll open another session. Because I want to show you where that's controlled. So we'll go to MM03. We'll look at our material 2098, which is the laser. Oh, there it is. And I want to show you the um, where the serial number profile is assigned because that's what controls the serialization and specifically when and where serial serialization is required. And it also controls whether an equipment is created at the same time. Let's go over here to Sales General Plant and no, I'm looking at the wrong material. Installation. I want 2098, the laser. So Sales General Plant and down here this field, serial number profile, ZMO1. So that's a profile I created, and we can take a look at it. And where is it? Serial Profile SM. I copied the uh, standard one, ZM01. But um, we'll take a look at that in a subsequent lecture. But suffice it to say that the serial number profile that you assign on the material is what controls the serialization throughout the um, processing of the product. So what I did on that serial profile Z ZMO1 was that I said on deliveries it is a required um, a, re a required item. So we, we will continue processing this but then we'll in the next lecture circle back to that serial profile. So we want to assign a serial number here. And, uh, oh, just because I'm in display mode, I want to get into, how could I be in display mode? I want to get into VL02N, change mode for that delivery. Select the item, extras, serial numbers. And uh, so I want us to think about what we're doing here. So we are in the warehouse and we're shipping out a laser. And we know the particular laser is in stock and it has been picked. So in front of the warehouse personnel or the shipping personnel, there is a laser and it's physically got a serial number on it. So we need to then uh, put the serial number that's on the product. But that serial number also has to exist in the, in the system. Right, so I can uh, search for my particular product, which is the which is two zero nine eight, to see what serial numbers are out there in the system. And so I go into my um, serial number search screen, and I see there are where's my number? I see there are two. Oh, yeah, 
not very creative here, one and two. Those are the serial numbers for these products. Of course, they could be anything, long numbers, short numbers, whatever we want. And we also see there are equipment numbers associated with them. So um, as the uh, serial number record was created, an equipment number record also was created. And um, I can also, a handy thing here, see the, the system status, um, which tells me the status of the serial number, whether it's in stock, which I think ESTO stands for, in stucca, uh, or if it's at a customer, which is ECUS, so et a customer site. Um, but this is handy because the system is smart enough to know if, if a serial number is already at a customer site, how can you ship it out of the warehouse? So it looks like these two are available. Um, so I'm going to select one of these and we'll see how that works. So now I'm saying there's serial number two. Click. And so now what's going to happen in terms of the uh, system is once I uh, post goods issue on this, the status of that serial number will change to be um, not in stock anymore. So let's do that. I'm going to try to post goods issue. And so there's a bunch of things we want to do after this. We want to see that the uh, serial number status changed. We want to look at the both the serial number record and the equipment record. And then we want to build this thing. So I think what we'll do uh, first is we'll just do a quick check on that serial number status. And then subsequently we will bill it, then we'll go and look at the detail around equipment records and serial numbers. Okay, so there's our delivery. It's been saved. We can go into uh, display mode, so it'll let us in there right away. So let's go over back to extras and serial numbers. And there's our serial number two. And we'll just do a search again to see if there's been a status change. And there's our serial number two, and the system status now is ecus at a customer instead of in stuck. So there we have it. The system is working as expected. So uh, I think we can just uh, go ahead and bill now. Let's do that. So we'll go back to the sales order. And this will be delivery related billing because both our items are on deliveries. And I don't recall if you can do it this way. Let's try. Yeah, can't do it that way. Got to do it. Uh, so we'll go to, let's go get our delivery number first. I'm so used to order related billing these days. I have to remember about delivery related billing the way most people do it. So we'll go to VF04, billing due list. We'll put in our delivery number. We'll make sure delivery related is clicked. We will make sure the billing date is out to the 15th. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we get a lot. Uh, we get an item here. We'll click on individual document. There we go. We got our two items on one invoice. That's what we want. Maybe some counting errors or whatnot, but we will at least get a billing document. And there's our billing document number 38992. Let's just go take a quick look at that. F03. There it is. So two items, the install, the laser, all on one invoice. This would be crazy and see if we can 
look at look at the uh, printed output. Even though I haven't set anything up, let's just give that a whirl just to be crazy. Yes. So there we have. Um, hold on, let me increase this green for you a little there. So there we have out of the box, beautiful SAP invoice document with the details. And here's our item, the laser and the value and the install and the value. And that's what a customer wants to see. Two items, one invoice for a laser and installation. So we're good there. We will next branch into taking a look at the um, serial number and equipment records. In this lecture, we're continuing with our field service scenario, and now we are looking at the serial numbers and equipment records that we just saw around our laser. So let's take a look at the serial number. So I'm going to go here to IQ03, and I can search for it as we've seen, but I happen to already know it's serial number 2, and here it is. So this serial number record is a master data record, kind of like a material master, but kind of not. So it's a unique combination of the material and the serial number. And there's our status that we saw. We can see these records have validity dates. They have statuses. There is a link to the equipment record, which is what we'll look at next. Uh, there's quite a few similarities between an equipment record and a serial number record. I tend to just think of it as the equipment record has more information as well as it is a unique number in and of itself, meaning that a serial number is unique just to this material. So there can be a serial number two for this laser. But there could also be a serial number two for a copier or a printer or a PC or something like that, whereas the equipment number is always unique. Yes, there is the ability to have a unique identifier now in serial records that there didn't used to be, but um, equipment number is always unique. And so continuing on with our serial number data here, um, one of the things you can do is see the history of this equipment right from here. You can click on the history button. That will tell you from an SAP point of view what has happened with, with the serial number. So, and it goes from, the most recent is at the top. So the oldest, the story goes from bottom up. So on 8.3, this serial number was received into the system on 8.8, which is today, it was goods issued and delivered. Actually, probably delivered first and then goods issued. And then, let's see if we drill into any one of these, we can see the actual uh, record of it. So we can see that this serial number material was received into stock on a 561 movement type, which is the magic one where you're just putting stuff into stock without a purchase order or a production order and um, so it gives you a nice history of everything that's happened with this um, with this serial number and you can click on the delivery you could see oh you know when was this delivery created who did it ship to etc etc so we'll come back uh, you can also see the customer that it's assigned to down here you can link it with uh, warranty information so if the if this material is warranted either by us or by a vendor for us that can be assigned here um, if there are well a whole lot of stuff here we won't go into everything go back into it so let's now branch into the equipment so i'm going to double click Okay, I'm not going to double click. I'm going to, um, we're going, we are going to look at this in the next lecture. So we'll stop here.